name is Jesse, and welcome to the first episode of Coffee 101. I know it's cringy, but anyways, so I'm not a latte art champion, nor do I have years of experience in the industry. Now I did compete in a national competition before, and I can pour things like this Shiba Inu right here. So I've learned everything pretty much just by watching videos or things on Instagram. So my theory is that if I could be self-taught just by watching videos, you can be as well. You don't need to pay a lot for latte art lessons, you just need to know the secrets. Now before we go into the details, I just want to clarify this video is only an introduction to how to steam better milk. This video is more intended for the baby baristas who just started working and is trying to understand the basics of steamed milk and also the home baristas who are struggling a bit in understanding what needs to be done for steamed milk. I'll be posting another video about how to troubleshoot the issues that you encounter in steaming milk. So in this video, I'm going to talk you through the things that will affect your milk texture. I'm going to break down this video into three parts according to the three keywords. I'm going to put emojis right here. Okay. <laughs> so let's start with the three keywords that are essential to steaming better milk. The eyes, the ears, and the hands. These are the three body parts that need to be paying attention when you steam milk. The first keyword, the eyes, stands for finding the swirl, as known as the vortex. The second keyword, the ears, stands for listening to the hissing. The third keyword, the hands, stands for feeling the temperature. These keywords are also in the order of how you should be absorbing your milk. So coffee making is a skill that needs you to multitask. And if you're already thinking, oh, you're not good at multitasking, that's like totally fine. No one's a natural at it. But all you need to do is build good habits while you practice and slowly everything will come naturally. So just to let you know, this teaching method was something that I came up with when I was a coffee trainer back at my old company. So I'm not too sure if this type of training method is used in other companies. So if you know, just let me know in the comments because it would be kind of interesting to see if other people think like me. The steamed milk that goes into coffee is essentially textured milk. We have the microphone on the top and the heated milk underneath. Microfoam is created by incorporating air into the milk, and this process is also called stretching the milk. The key to steaming better textured milk is by creating a consistent swirl. What this swirl does is that it incorporates the heated milk with the microfoam that prevents them from splitting when you pour. The textured milk should always look like wet paint. It doesn't matter if it's for a flat white, latte, or a cappuccino. Let's start with the first part of the video, which focuses on finding the swirl. If you're new to steaming milk and aren't quite sure how much milk to pour in your jug, a good rule of thumb is to fill your jug up until a little bit below the end of the spout and steam until the milk is slightly above that mark. This amount of milk will leave you enough room in a jug to pour latte art. I won't get too deep into the relationship between jugs and latte art, but I'll mention that it'll be easier for you to learn how to pour latte art if you have less milk in the jug. In other words, less milk helps you to get closer to the surface of the espresso. If you pour too much milk into the jug, chances are the milk is going to spill as the milk expands. It also leaves you less space to tilt the jug, so it will be harder for you to pour latte art, especially if you're a beginner. You want to avoid having your jug overflowed, as it causes a big mess and ruins your workflow. If the usual amount of milk you steam with goes past the end of the spout, you might need a bigger jug. Let me show you the three common sizes for milk jugs. If you're using a domestic machine, I recommend you to steam with a jug that has a capacity of 400 milliliter or less because you'll typically steam with a weaker and shorter steam wand. It will be easier for you to create a swirl in a small jug than a big jug. 
If you're using a commercial machine, I recommend you to use a 500 milliliter jug because the steam wand is usually so powerful that the milk heats up faster than you can actually register the steps in your head. You can of course also practice with a bigger jug, but just keep in mind that you're likely to produce more milk wastage. Now let's start with our demonstration. Remember to purge your steam wand before steaming milk, and purge until you only see dry steam. Domestic machines seem to accumulate more water in the steam wand than commercial machines, so make sure the steam is nice and dry, and start preferably immediately so the water doesn't build up again. In order to create a swirl, you must position your steam wand correctly. There is mainly one way of positioning the steam wand, which is using the spout as a positioning tool. But I've seen people steam sideways, which I don't really recommend because it doesn't give you enough support. Once you start steaming, you want to be extremely gentle with your movements. The less milk you have, the more impactful your movements will be to the milk. So always, always remember to be delicate. The rule of thumb is to position the steam wand at an angle wherever a continuous roll can be formed. So I've seen videos that say you should position your steam wand at a 40 degrees or 45 degrees, but I've never personally felt that was an effective way to learn. Because there's so many variables that affect how the Such as the number and direction of the holes on the tip and the strength of the steam. These variables will affect how you should position your steam wand, the time of how long it takes you to steam milk to a certain temperature, and the angle of how you should tilt your jug. If you want to reduce wastage during practice, you can use ice or cold water in dish soap. Practicing with water helps you see the tip of the steam wand and understand the mechanism of steaming milk. Right now, I'm pretending that I don't know where to position my steam wand. As I start steaming, I'm trying to reposition the jug to find the swirl. The position seems close to where I want it to be, but you can tell the swirl is fairly slow and the sound of the steam has become deeper, meaning it's starting to boil. The surface seems bubbly and flat at the end, so I'm going to try to find the correct position for my next try. Now I'm positioning the steam wand slightly off-centered because I started from the middle for my last try and that didn't work. I'm also submerging less of the tip so I add more air at the beginning since I felt my last try had a flat texture. Now I'm seeing a smooth and silky texture so I know I got the angle and the position right. All I need to do now is to remember the angle and the depth of how deep the tip was submerged. Since the steaming technique for a domestic machine slightly varies, here's a demonstration with my Delonghi Dedica, which only has one hole on its tip. Domestic machines normally have weaker steam, so your swirl will be slower, which is totally fine. Your priority should be creating the foam as early as possible, and incorporating the foam in the milk as long as possible. I've positioned the steam wand almost out of the surface of the milk so air is incorporated as early as possible. Since the steam from this machine is one directional, I'm also tilting the jug at a bigger angle so it's easier to create that swirl. When I position the steam wand a bit deeper to incorporate the microphone with the milk, the swirl will become inconsistent in the upper and lower part of the jug due to weak steam. We can manually incorporate them together when we switch jugs, so it's not a big issue. We can also get rid of the big bubbles on the surface by tapping. The milk looks a bit stiff, but let's see how it is after we switch jugs. The milk looks pretty smooth after switching jugs. Now let's talk about the instances that might lead to bad milk texture. If the steam wand was positioned too shallow or too deep, the microfilm and the milk would be incorporated unevenly.
Here I positioned a steam one at the bottom of the jug and you can see the swirl had slowed down on the surface. The milk came out fine, but if you look closer, there are small bubbles all over the milk. These small bubbles are hard to get rid of by tapping or switching jugs, and it'll look obvious once poured into espresso. Big movements also create bubbles. Look at how much I'm moving when I'm steaming the milk. The milk looked all right after tapping, but I created too much foam in the process. In order to save this jug of milk, I tipped out some of the foam on top to adjust the thickness of the microphone. Here's another example where I was moving too much, plus wasn't focusing on creating a swirl. Although I was stretching the milk, I wasn't actually incorporating the microphone with the milk. Hence, you can see there are plenty of bubbles on the surface and switching jugs didn't really help improve the texture. These are the brief examples when you forget to use your hands to find the swirl when you're steaming milk. So remember, creating a swirl leads to a better milk texture. Now that I've talked about the first step in steaming milk, the next step is to use your ears to identify whether you're steaming the milk correctly or not. Let's go back and start from the beginning. I found the spot that creates the swirl, so I'm going to start from that position. After I see the swirl form, I slightly tilt my jug and move down to stretch the milk. As it swirls, I'm paying attention to the noise that they make. Let's pause for a bit and explain the four types of sounds that you'll hear during milk steaming. By paying attention to the sound, you can identify whether you're stretching, incorporating the microphone with the milk, or just heating the milk. Let's listen to what they sound like. For our video today, we're looking to achieve number one and number three. Number two is usually done if you're after a dry drink, a drink that only has foam and barely any liquid milk. Number four is usually only done if you're after a wet drink, a drink that only has heated liquid milk and no foam. Ideally, you want to remember these sounds by heart, so feel free to go back and listen to them again. Let's go back to steaming our milk. Remember to maintain this roll while you stretch your milk. While you listen to the hissing, watch how the milk expands in volume. Remember, we're using both our eyes and our ears now. After I see the milk has expanded to my ideal volume, which is between 1 to 2 centimeters, I put the steam one slightly below the surface where I don't hear the stretching sound, but also make sure you still see the swirl. The milk will start to sound deeper as it heats up. Let's reverse back to when we were stretching the milk so I can give you guys a little tip. Other than paying attention to the swirl, the expansion, and the sound, you also need to continuously observe the texture of the milk. I paused here to show you the bubbles forming on the surface of the milk. While the milk is expanding, we want to make sure that we reposition the jug to break these bubbles. My method is to use the steam wand as an anchor point and tilt the bottom of the jug slightly forward. Let me replay it again at a faster speed. So if you ever wanted to kill the bubbles on the surface, 
like what I demonstrated on the video. It might be a little bit hard to tell how I moved my jug. So what I did was, so for example, if the seam wonders are here, I tilted my jug forward like this. You're not supposed to move up and down when you kill the bubbles. You just want to have a little bit of air and that's how the bubbles disappear. And so I would just tilt the jug a little bit forward and then do it really slowly so it doesn't cause more bubbles to appear. And while you're very patient, you'll see that the vortex is hitting the bubbles and that the bubbles will di disappear. So after you think the milk is smooth enough, you just want to tilt back and then push up a bit. So just incorporating the milk and not creating more foam. Now let's bring in the last keyword, the hands. Other than using your hands to move the jug, you also need to use them to feel the temperature of the milk. Some people say you should stop steaming when it's too hot to touch, but in reality, everyone's sensitivity to temperature essentially varies. I have thinner skin on my hands, so when it hits 50 degrees, it's already pretty hot for me, but for others, it might be 70 or even 80 degrees. So learning when to stop just by following stop when it feels too hot to touch is not a good way to practice. For beginners, I recommend you to place a thermometer in the jug while you steam and physically remember what a certain temperature feels like. I usually steam dairy milk to a maximum of 65 degrees and plant-based milk to 60 degrees. The structure of the milk will start to break down and you won't be able to get that shiny texture if you steam anywhere higher than these temperatures. So here I'm just steaming for demonstration, pretending to not know what 65 degrees feels like. After I maintain this roll and stretch the milk, I'm going to stop steaming after the thermometer hits 65 degrees. Unless you're steaming for an extra hot drink, if you see steam rising from the milk, that's a good indication that it's exceeded 65 degrees and you should stop immediately. Let's rewind and listen to the milk again. Other than using your hands to feel the temperature, it's also important for you to remember how the milk sounds like as temperature rises. Listen carefully to the milk as I steam. So it seems like I steamed the milk slightly above the 65 degrees mark, but the sound of the milk was very consistent, so that's a good sign. Now let's steam a jug of milk again without a thermometer. According to the tips I previously mentioned, I'm going to identify the moment when I should stop steaming based on the feeling on my palm and the sound of the milk. I personally steam under 55 degrees for both types of milk, so I'll aim for that today. Once temperature rises, you will hear the milk create a lower pitch. I'm holding the jug most of the time, and I'll stop steaming once I feel a slight burn on the base of my thumb. I was aiming for a temperature between 45 to 55 degrees. Now let's see if I've hit my target. It's at 51 degrees just the right temperature for pouring latte art. Let's return to the beginning and do a recap of the key points to steaming better milk. Purge. Position to steam one. Find the swirl. Stretch the milk. Maintain the swirl, kill the bubbles, incorporate the microfilm in the milk, listen to the milk, and feel the temperature. After you think you created enough microfilm, incorporated everything together, and heated the milk to an ideal temperature, stop the steam but do not immediately remove the jug. Some steam wands have a slight delay and will continue to blow out some air after you turned off the steam. If you remove the jug before the steam has completely stopped, it will leave your milk with some extra bubbles or even ruin your milk texture. 
Finally, remember to wipe and purge the steam wand. Tap a few times to knock out any bubbles beneath the surface, but don't tap aggressively because the more you tap, the more the milk separates. A jug of well-textured milk should not have any visible bubbles at the end. So if we wanted to break down the stages of steaming milk, the first stage would be stretching. And the second stage would be incorporating the milk. And heating the milk would start from the instance when you started steaming. During this whole duration of steaming milk, you want to remember to use your eyes to observe the swirl, the expansion of the milk, and the texture of the microfilm. Your ears to listen to the stretching and the temperature of the milk. Your hands to position the jug, find the swirl, and feel the temperature. So in summary, what this video wants to tell you is that you need to pay attention when you steam milk. You need to know what went wrong when you steam milk. For example, if you steamed too aggressively, was it your hand that made too much movement? Or were you tilting jug too much to let too much air in? You need to just pay attention to everything while you steam milk. And that's why we hate people when they talk to us when we steam milk. So if you feel too overwhelmed by how many things you need to look out for, try to film yourself steaming milk and try to focus on what went wrong and then go back and then focus on that element. For example, if you could only focus on the eyes part, you're fine this roll, but you couldn't really let your ears in while you're steaming, it's okay. Just focus on finding the swirl first and then move on to the next step. Continue to train your eyes to find that swirl, train your ears in understanding what the hissing sounds like, and your hands to understand what 60 degrees feels like. So I hope you enjoyed my video today. And let me know in the comments that if you have any other problems or if my videos helped you. And also like the video and subscribe to my channel so you can see more content and also maybe watch my vlog. And feel free to let me know what you want to see in the future in this series. And I'm here just to share my experience, so I hope you like it. Subscribe to my channel. Okay. <laughs> okay. Goodbye.